This video is supported by CuriosityStream. Remember the extreme fads of the early 2000s? It's like kind of everywhere everything was just suddenly extreme, you know, like extreme sports, extreme Cheetos, extreme knitting, extreme yoga. You could say it got extremely out of hand. Like, does the world need extreme croquet? I mean, after a while, the word extreme just loses all meaning. Until you look up at the sky. Because the universe has produced some pretty extreme things in its time, some of which uh, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. We humans love hearing about extremes. The biggest, the smallest, oldest, youngest, the smartest, the dumbest, most handsome. Saddest. Why do we do this? <laughs> is it to better understand ourselves? Is it to contextualize our place in the universe? Or is it to give ourselves benchmarks to improve and grow? Or to make ourselves feel more powerful or attractive or giving? We've been given a life on this tiny blue planet, and due to this miracle, we can look out into the universe and actually understand our place in it. We may be the only creatures, to our knowledge anyway, that have the ability to do this. And when we do so, we find a universe filled with extremes. Extremes that are completely outside of our comprehension. So for this episode, we're going to look at some of those extremes. Some of the brightest, hottest, biggest things that we've seen out there in the universe. And since we all seem to be preoccupied with age so much, why don't we start off looking at the oldest thing in the universe. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old, give or take a few years. So anything that gets close to that age is going to qualify as one of the oldest things in the universe. And one of those things is actually found right here in the Milky Way galaxy. It's a star cluster called HP1, and it's 12.8 billion years old. Located in the middle of our galaxy's bulge, insert joke here, HP1's age had previously conflicting estimates. However, the all-powerful Gemini South Telescope in Chile helped provide a more accurate age for this star cluster. Outside the Milky Way, GNZ11 is currently considered the oldest and most distant galaxy in the universe. It's approximately 32 billion light years away. But wait, you may be saying, isn't the universe only 13.8 billion years old? How could it possibly be that far away? Good for you. You're paying attention. GNZ11 has been observed at what it looked like 13.4 billion years ago, but as we all know, the universe is expanding, which means that it is now much further away from us. Now, technically, the oldest thing in the universe is hydrogen, because it was produced immediately after the Big Bang, which was, again, 13.8 billion years ago. If you take anything away from this video, it's that. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. Although technically helium was also produced at the moment of the Big Bang, but in a much smaller amount than the hydrogen. Now interestingly, the most ancient type of molecules recently found in the planetary nebula is NGC 7027. It's called helium hydride, and it's basically a combination of hydrogen and helium, and it's thought to be the first molecular bond and compound ever created. So sure, we can debate the definitions of hot and temperature and object, but just to keep things simple, let's just talk about things that give off a lot of heat. Now, one of the hottest things in the universe actually happened pretty close by, cosmically speaking. Actually, it's pretty close by by any relative terms, because it happened right here on Earth. It actually happened at the Large Hadron Collider during a CERN experiment. Scientists wanted to make a quark gluon behave like a frictionless fluid, like you do, and the experiment reached a temperature of 9.9 .9 trillion degrees Fahrenheit, or really freaking hot Celsius. This temperature is more than 366,000 times the heat of the center of our sun. Then there's Eta Carinae, a binary hypergiant star system that's 7,500 light years away from us. Together, the two stars reach about 72,000 degrees Fahrenheit on their surface, but when they get close to each other, it reaches 1.8 million degrees Fahrenheit. And let's not forget Quasar 3C273, which runs reportedly at around 36 to 72 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. But technically, the hottest thing in the universe was the Big Bang, which happened when? 13.8 billion years ago. The earliest temperature after the Big Bang was 10 to the power of 32 Kelvin. That's 100 million, 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 million degrees Fahrenheit. You'll want to wear at least SPF 50 for that. Now, in case you're wondering, while there's not a limit to how high a temperature can get, there is a limit to how low a temperature can get. Of course, that's absolute zero. Absolute zero is zero Kelvin, and this is the point where there's absolutely no energy left in an object to produce heat anymore. So with that in mind, the coldest object in the universe is the Boomerang Nebula, which functions at a balmy one degree Kelvin or negative 457 degrees Fahrenheit. Brightness is defined as how much light an object produces that reaches our eyes, but brightness can be relative though. You hold a light bulb right up to your eye, it can be just as bright as the sun. Now outside of that light bulb in your eye, there are a few extremely bright objects in the universe. So let's start with a quasar, a quasar named this. Not even gonna try it, I'm just gonna call it Dave. 
Dave the Quasar shines at an equivalent of 600 trillion suns. Luckily, it's 12.8 billion light years away, so you don't have to worry about it. You can sleep at night. But there are some that think that its brightness is actually an illusion created by gravitational lensing. Yeah, one interpretation of the data says that this quasar is producing light from 13 billion years ago, but it is passing through a galaxy cluster that may be intensifying the brightness of that light. Intensifying it by a factor of 50, so it may only be 10 to 12 trillion times as bright as the sun. Do you even light, bro? Now, if that is the case, then there might be something that is actually brighter than Dave, and that's a gamma ray burst. I've covered gamma ray bursts in this channel before, but they're basically short bursts of extreme gamma radiation, and they happen almost daily in the visible universe, but there was one particular one that was captured in January 2019 by one of NASA satellites. The explosion from GRB 190114C happened in a galaxy more than 4 billion light years away, and it contained 100 billion times as much energy as the light that we can see from it. Now, if we're going to talk about bright objects, it's only fair to talk about the opposite of that, things that are denser or darker. Now, you might think that somebody with a different political view than yours might be the densest thing in the universe. You would be wrong. That's because neutron stars are a thing. Neutron stars are like black holes that didn't quite black hole, but they carry about the same amount of gravitational force as a black hole. Most of these stars have a mass that's about 1.4 times that of our sun, but there are a few of these that stand out. This neutron star, which I'll call Ben, has a mass 2.01 times that of our sun. But in September of last year, a new neutron star was discovered, this one, I'll call it Jerry, that has 2.14 times the mass of our sun. Now those numbers might confuse you because you're thinking, you know, two times the size of our sun, that doesn't really sound that big really, but keep in mind, these stars are only 12 miles across. Okay, so you've got Earth, and then you've got the sun, which is much bigger than the Earth. Now imagine the sun is actually twice that size, and then gets compressed down to the size of New York City. Neutron stars are bananas. But there's one thing in the universe that sees that and just says, hold my beer. Inside the Able 85 galaxy cluster about 700 million light years away, there's a galaxy called Home 15A. And at the center of Home 15A is a supermassive black hole 40 billion times the mass of our sun. 40 billion suns smash together so tightly that they create a singularity that rips through the fabric of space-time. Doesn't get much more dense than that. All right, let's get to the biggest thing in the universe, starting with stars. The biggest star in the universe is called UY Scuti, and it's located approximately 9,500 light years away near the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Its radius is 1,700 times larger than the sun. The biggest galaxy is called IC 1101. It's 50 times larger and 2,000 times more massive than the Milky Way. It also stretches for 5.5 million light years. Our galaxy only stretches for 100,000 light years across. It's enough to make a galaxy feel inadequate. Of course, gravity can pull galaxies together to form galaxy clusters. In fact, NASA believes that 75% of all galaxies are in clusters. The largest cluster is called El Gordo, officially known as ACT-CLJ0102-4915. This cluster contains 3 million billion suns. NASA says it's the largest, hottest, and brightest X-ray galaxy cluster ever discovered in a distant universe. But believe it or not, that may get surpassed soon. Astronomers have found two different galaxy clusters that are currently merging into one. It's in a system called Abel 1758, a quadruple galaxy cluster about 3 billion light years from Earth, and after it forms, it will be one of the universe's most massive objects. But really though, uh, at the risk of sounding pedantic, if you want to argue that the universe is a single thing, then obviously the biggest thing in the universe is the universe itself. Unless there's a multiverse, <laughs> but for the purposes of this video, you gotta stop somewhere. Now all of this stuff is super impressive, might be hard to wrap your head around, but really when it all comes down to it, it's all based on a handful of physical principles, you know, pretty simple stuff. But where the laws of nature really shine is when those simple elements come together to form bigger elements. This is where complexity starts to creep in. Complexity is like the maturing of matter. It's like the ultimate thing that these things can do. So what's the most complex thing in the universe? Well, there is one object that stands above the rest, something we're still struggling to understand. It's capable of directing quadrillions of electrical signals and able to create structures in 11 dimensions. What is this most extremely complex thing in the universe? It's your brain. Come on, you saw it coming. But seriously, the brain is made up of 100 billion cells, reaching out with multiple dendrites and axons, forming the most complex network of connections known to man. It's thought to contain more than 100 trillion pathways. And it's those pathways that make it possible for you to walk and talk and look up into the sky and question what are the most extreme things up there. And the fact that you're capable of doing that makes you the most extreme thing in the universe. Extreme! So what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? 
And you don't have to take my word for it. You can hear Brian Cox talk about it in his own words in his series, The Human Universe, on CuriosityStream. The Human Universe examines the history of the universe through the eyes of the only known creatures who can experience it. And that's us, humans. From how we rose from hairless apes to spacemen to whether we're alone in the universe and the big questions like why we're here and where we're going. You know, the small stuff. And of course, that's just one of hundreds of top quality documentaries on CuriosityStream, covering everything from history to cutting edge science and all that big brain stuff you know and love. Viewers of this channel can get one month free of CuriosityStream if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash Joe Scott. That's plenty enough to watch the Human Universe series and uh, well, a lot of them really, if you apply yourself. But even after that, it's only like $2.99 a month. It's one of the best deals out there for streaming services. It's amazing. Plus, you get access to Nebula, which is uh, something I'm a part of and many other smart YouTubers. You can get our content ad-free and there's exclusive Nebula originals that you can't find anywhere else. And it all comes as a bundle if you apply uh, and get that one month free at curiositystream.com slash Joe Scott. Link is downstairs. All right, thanks to CuriosityStream for helping to support this channel and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon who are forming a community and just being awesome people. I love these guys and uh, there's some new people that have just joined. Let me destroy their names real quick. We've got Ken Hoinski, James Heskey, Ken McKenzie, Michelle Parker, William Kuo, Jack Jones, Drake, Saigo, Will Cooper, Patrick J. Hammers, KJ Skinner, John Shanks, Vincent Engler, I got a lot here, uh, Fernando Fontana, Matt Duchette, uh, Sefith, I think I'm saying that right, Andre Gizjunier, <laughs> Chad Boniker, Saul, Brandon Haley, Andrew Rodriguez, Jason Rogers, Marcelo Luis Onhete, I think, and Steve Kyle. I'm sorry, I know I did some of those really badly there, but thank you guys so much for joining. If you'd like to join them, get early access to videos and access to me and some exclusive Patreon stuff behind the scenes and bloopers and whatnot, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. All right, please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, you can go check out this video because Google thinks that it works for you. And there's plenty of others that's probably suggesting down here with my face on it. I invite you to check those out. And if you like them, uh, please do subscribe because I come back with videos every Monday and Thursday. Also, I'm going to be appearing at Fully Charged Live in Austin on February 1st and 2nd. It's a really cool event. I'll put a link down in the description. Definitely go check that out. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out and have an eye-opening rest of the week. And I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.